Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverablebase.com. If you haven't seen my website, you might want to have a look at the end of the lesson for a lot more free video tutorials like this one. So today, right now, we're having a look at double bass chords and I'm going to be showing you how to play the piece that I played at the introduction there. I really wanted to show you just uh, some of the ways that I use chords on the bass with a little feature uh, piece. Um, so we'll go through that and I'll show you ways of adding in chords into your own bass playing. So let's get straight into the detail. Let's get started by looking at what works really well on the double bass. And the short answer to that is major thirds or minor thirds up an octave, um, which we refer to as tenths. So uh, a third up an octave is a tenth. So for instance, uh, here's C with the third. There's the root and there's the major third. Here's F sharp and D, which will give me a nice D major sound. Uh, here's the G natural and an E, which is the E minor sound. And they all sound awesome on the double bass. In that little introduction that I often use uh, for the lessons, I quite often have a these chords uh, played down low on the bass as well. So. What I'd really want to encourage you to do is when you're practicing scales and you're referencing your tuning against the open strings, spend some time and just enjoy the different sounds that you can get. Uh, I quite often play things as chords, so I'm just practicing A major. than just practicing your arpeggios and your scales and not really listening. I really try and hear the way that the different notes sound against each other. Um, and then I try and spend some time improvising around whatever scale I'm practicing. And I got some great advice from a teacher when I started out, which was if you're practicing a scale, get really into it and not just practicing the, the that you would do in a conventional way. Really start to explore the sounds, how the intervals sound against each other, the quality of the chord, and you know, just allow yourself to, to play throughout the range of the bass. And that's what I was doing when I came up with the piece that we heard earlier. It's in the key of C major or A minor. There's no sharps or flats. Um, so I was just thinking, okay, how can I play um, A minor, let's have a think. And maybe I'd like to play sixths, or maybe I'd like to carry that going up the bass, or or maybe I'd like a seventh. And there's all these different sounds uh, within there, and particularly when you reference back to the open strings. So very popular keys to do this in will be A, E, and D. Another good way of adding in more texture and, and uh, is to expand to go beyond just one note and the harmonics, if you have them ringing on the middle strings, work really well. So just experiment with the sound. So for instance, we've got a C major there and then put in some of the notes. See what that E sounds like. You could get really creative and say play something like in, the, in E minor. third, the minor third there, and the seventh. So we have quite a lot of options here, um, and really, it's quite, um, I'm not really suggesting to do anything too specific, except for to explore these sounds and find nice combinations of notes that you like on the bass. A couple of quick tips about how you use them. They sound really nice in a solo kind of environment or with maybe another single line instrument like for instance a saxophone. But when you get other harmonic instruments like piano or guitar, um, it can make it very dense and you just, and the drums as well actually will have this effect. They just smother 
the chord and you lose all of the impact. So if you're playing a solo and you break it down really quietly and you can use chords, then everybody will stand, you know, hopefully come down as well in volume and listen to you and interact and they'll leave room for you to play them. But if you just shove them in in your walking lines, the reality is they'll probably get lost. So, you know, have a think about how that you're actually able to add them in in an effective way. You might want to check out um, the playing of Brian Bromberg, um, Christian McBride and John Patitucci, they all do an amazing job at adding in chords throughout their uh, regular bass lines and solos uh, to give them a wider range of uh, textures. Well, let's move straight on and have a look at specifically what I was playing at the start. Okay, it started with a, a G harmonic here. And then the next note was an F, G, F, and then E, E, C, A. So you've got an A minor triad there. And then I slid down from the E to the D, played the G sharp with my sec first finger, and played the E. So I've got an E, e dominant seventh chord there. Then I'm going to go back to another A minor chord. Here, now I've got um, the C which is the third, and the G, which is the seventh. And here, I'm finishing off without shifting at all, because I've got the B under the first finger, and the G natural, and I'm gonna make it a major third, which makes it dominant, and brings us back to the key of A minor. Uh, and then there was this pattern. So we've got the A and the C. B natural, C, D, and E. The D is the, is the uh, seventh, the minor seventh. And then this lovely C major chord, and I'm putting in the harmonic there as well. Then back to the similar pattern at the beginning. Straight away, a lovely tenth, B flat, D, B flat and a D, so B flat major seventh. And now I've played the A, and then there's the C. And that was as similar to what I was playing right at the beginning. Uh, certainly those ideas were what I was basing it on. And then I tried to bring the tempo in. And the first thing is exactly the same A minor um, triad. And this time I've got B, um, E, sorry. I've got a B and an F uh, in my uh, second and little finger, and an E is what I meant at the bottom. And now I've got the A arpe um, chord again. So, dominant seven chord there, the E dominant seven chord wants to resolve to A minor. B. there I've gone back to the similar chords that I started with at the beginning. A, E, A, E. And I can't remember what I did then. Um, I think I went back into the groove. And then this chord which is uh, an E, B, it's kind of an E7 flat 9 really is the way I think about it. But you don't really need to understand just exactly what the harmonic function you're providing is. Just enjoy the sound and listen to that. And then I finish going up to the A, which is the, um, well, the root note, isn't it? And then G sharp and E to give this big dominant chord. Um, I think I went up to the B, which then leads us into this pattern here. And what I'm doing here is I'm playing the C with my thumb. And I'm playing these two harmonics here. So I'm letting the harmonics ring. 
So we've got an A and an E in the harmonics. And again, there's this contrast with the C falling to the B. And then this little pattern here, E, F, E, D, C. E to the F, E to the D, slide down, and then start again. Get out of tune there. That's better. And then I think I finished with a sort of riff. And then these final harmonics, which are G, A, G, A, and then the open A. Well, that was a bit of a, a whistle-stop tour. I didn't really want to dwell on too much of the detail. Really, what I was hoping to do was just to give you some ideas. You think, oh, that's interesting, maybe using the harmonics and the, and the note to play the stop note with the thumb. You know, small things like this to come away uh, away from the lesson with. Maybe I like the sound of the, the tents here. Uh, maybe I'm going to do something with the open strings. Really, I just want to inspire you to go forward and come up with some lines of your own. Um, so if you've got any questions about this, feel free to email me. You can leave a comment. Um, I always love to... Uh, uh, to hear your questions and hear how you're getting on with these lessons. Uh, and if you'd like more free video double bass lessons, you can visit discoverdoublebass.com.